This is Geometry Lesson 3.7. We're going to be talking about points of concurrency. These are created by previous constructions that we've already learned. Um, and we're going to be talking about them related to triangles. So first we're going to define the word concurrent. And here you can see examples of lines that are not concurrent and lines that are concurrent. So notice all of these lines come together at one intersection point and that point is called the point of concurrency. So it's just an intersection when it's two lines, but when it's three or more lines, it's called a uh, point of concurrency or they're concurrent. Our first point of concurrency is when we construct three perpendicular bisectors on a triangle. This point that they meet at will be called the circumcenter of the triangle. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna construct the three perpendicular bisectors. So go more than halfway across, construct your semicircle, semicircle, and this will get very messy because you'll have lots of arcs through your triangle. I'll try to keep it color coded so that it's easier to tell. All right, so that bottom side is black markings. ones. And then maybe green. You will have to be careful because your arcs may overlap and it will get confusing. And since you'll just be using a pencil each time, you'll have to really follow your arc marks. Make sure you're getting the correct arcs and corners. All right, now this looks like a ginormous mess, but you can see, let me just make a large point here where they intersect, right here, all three of my per perpendicular bisectors come together at a point of concurrency. So this blue point is called the circumcenter of this triangle. And the circumcenter has some special properties. Because it's on the perpendicular bisectors, it is equal distance from the vertices of the triangle. So if you were to connect from the circumcenter to each of the corners, that distance would be the same. Um, it's also the point used to construct a circle that is circumscribed around the triangle. And that would be a circle that's on the outside, and we'll talk more about that. Um, so to construct that, you would need to first construct your point of concurrency here, your circumcenter. And then you're going to place your compass point on that point and your pencil on one of the vertices and you'll be able to swing it around. So I can actually demonstrate that on this one. So if I place my compass point here on my circumcenter and I find one of the vertices, place my pencil, and let's see if I can get a brighter color here. Let's try yellow. It should hit all three vertices of that triangle. So that would be a circumscribed circle. And the circumcenter is equidistant from every corner of the triangle, and again constructed by finding the perpendicular bisector of each side. Um, it's also used to construct the circumscribed circle. So right there. Alright, the next one is constructing three angle bisectors on a triangle, which will create a point of concurrency where they all meet, and this is called the in-center. So I'm going to do the angle bisectors of each corner, and again, this will get confusing and messy, so be very careful. Make the arc, go to the intersection, make another arc, go to the other intersection, your arcs will cross. And draw in your ray, your angle bisector. Now this one tends to be the one where most people get mixed up just because sometimes the angles are quite small and if you're off just a little bit your point of concurrency will be off 
a little bit as well, which will mess things up. <coughs> All right, we'll choose a different color, go off of a different corner. Drop my arc. Now be careful where you're placing your point. Make sure it's on the correct spot, the side of the angle. Going off the vertex to the intersection of those. Computer's glitching a little bit, so it's going to be a little bit off, but you get the idea. So that angle has been cut in half. And then we would do it again on this third corner here. And using my straight edge, connect the vertex to that intersection point. And you can see my three lines don't line up perfectly. And that could have been simply because I didn't have my compass point exactly on an intersection. It might have been slightly off, but it's pretty close enough. So I'll label that Maybe with a brighter color. Right there, my in center point. And here's some properties about the in center. So the in center, because it's on the angle bisectors, it's equidistant from the sides. So if I were to draw a perpendicular to each of these sides, it would be equal in distance. And that in center is the point used to make an inscribed circle. And to create the inscribed circle, we would need to find the in center, but then you have to create a perpendicular to one of the sides. So it takes a little bit more time. Um, and then you would use the in center and that intersection of the perpendicular and the side to create your radius. So I can give you a quick demonstration here. I don't have time to do the perpendicular, but let's just imagine that we had the perpendicular ready to go. And oops, let me grab a color here. We'll do green. And I'm just going to eyeball it. Let's say that this was the perpendicular segment from our point down to the side. So this one's perpendicular. I would take my compass, measure that radius length from the in center out to that point. And again, because my in center was slightly off, my circle may get slightly off as well. And I didn't actually measure this perpendicular, so it could be off as well. So this would be um, the distance of our radius. I'm going to place my compass on that in center point and swing it around when oh, it's pretty close. It should touch each side exactly once. This would create some tangents as well. And it looks like it didn't quite reach, but almost. So we should have three tangent segments. This would be the inscribed circle. And again, talking about the in center, creating the inscribed circle. All right, the last one for today is the ortho center. And this is a point of um, concurrency that's created by constructing the three altitudes of a triangle. So let me grab the compass. And remember, an altitude is when you have that perpendicular. So we have to start at an opposite vertex and go across to the side opposite and create an arc that hits twice and then using that intersection points create two more arcs that intersect. Use your straight edge to connect the vertex down through the intersection points. That would be your altitude right there. And then I would continue on to the other two corners. Now, when I have a triangle like this, um, I'm not quite sure if this is a right corner here. could be obtuse, but I do want to extend out that side. So let's see here. Maybe I'll make it this pink color. I want to extend it out so I have something to hit twice. So let me go across here. I want to make 
make sure I hit that side twice. I'm going to go to the intersection. And I'll make a mark. The other intersection. Make another mark. And then I would connect. Now it looks like it's going to go right along the side almost. So this may be, um, I might have some flaws on my intersections here, but it looks like it's almost a 90 degree triangle or a right triangle. So you can see this line I would actually need to extend um, up and beyond so that I could reach that point of concurrency. Now I would do it one more time off this corner and this side, but because I know it's a point of concurrency, it will meet. So I'm just going to emphasize that point where they're crossing right here. Oops. And that would be my ortho center. And the ortho center um, has different locations depending on what type of triangle. So you can see here, this one right here is an acute triangle. The ortho center will be on the inside. If it's an obtuse triangle, where we have one angle bigger than 90, the ortho center would be on the outside of the triangle. On a right triangle, it would be on the right angle, right at the corner. And when you find the ortho center and you use that point, um, if you find the ortho center of a triangle and you use that point and two corners of the triangle to make another triangle, the third original vertex of the triangle is the new triangle's ortho center. So let me emphasize that on this picture. So if I use the ortho center and then two other corners of the triangle, so let's go, oh, that's not very straight. There we go. Okay, so if I'm looking at this new triangle, this point would be the ortho center of that triangle. And here are the practice problems that cover those points of concurrency.